everyone. It is Teresa from Teresa's Spot for Art, where I love sharing art from my heart and teaching you how to create a little joy in your life through some fun, simple, and quick art projects. Hello! Welcome to, um, we're doing the spring. Can you see that? The Spring Highland Cow. I have out my paints. We're going to get started with some black for our background. I'm going to switch the camera around and we will get painting. So there we go. So if you have the kit, um, you have a pre-traced canvas in front of you. If you've got the digital download, you can um, trace on or freehand your design on there, however you want, graphite paper, um, whatever you think works for you. Um, and we're gonna get started. I'm going to load my brush with black, and when I do that, I'm gonna come to the side of my puddle, put a little bit of pressure on my brush because I wanna flare out the fibers, and I wanna get my paint up into my paintbrush, okay? And then I'm just gonna pick a corner to start at, and I'm just gonna start painting in the background. If you already painted your background, you can fast forward um, to where I start painting in our cow and our design. I'm not gonna get real close to my flowers I'm coming a little bit close to my leaves, but I'm not gonna get totally close to my flowers. I'm gonna leave a bit of room there, so if I need to adjust anything or fix my flowers, I can. If you got real close to your flowers, that's okay, because when um, you do your flower, if you want to, you can fix it. If you want your flower to be a little bigger or a little smaller, it's totally fine, because you can pretty much fix anything with acrylic paint. It might be a little harder to go over the flower. Um, well, the background, which is black, with our flower colors, which are lighter, purple, and fuchsia in this case, but you'll be able to do it. So don't worry if you get black paint where you're not supposed to. You'll be able to fix it. Okay? I am doing a wrapped canvas. I'm going to paint the edges. You don't have to paint the edges. You can if you want. You can leave them for last. Um, you can paint them a different color. It's totally up to you. I'm painting in here in between. So part of this is our Highlander's crazy hair. This part we're going around, what is it? The horn, an antler, what are they called on cows? And then the bottom part is his body or his back. And in this case, I'm skipping over the part here where it's gonna be his horns. And I'm just doing the black in between. Oh, I don't have to turn mine around because I have my Lazy Susie, but that's okay. If you need to get a smaller brush here to go in between, this part doesn't matter as much because when we do all the hair, you're gonna paint over into the black our brush strokes and our hair and the cow's um, fur is gonna come over the black. I'm just doing a rough outline, jagged edge for now, but we're not gonna really worry about that. It's gonna be more important when we start our browns and our tans with how we paint that. I just didn't wanna make like a one big straight line. So now you have access to this video if you wanted to paint this again or if you need to hit pause or fast forward, go right ahead and then you can come back and start over or start where you left off. And again, I'm just doing the edge. Oh, knocked over all my paint. Now we want to do the bottom down here. Like I said, the rest of the cow part this is going to be a cow, antler, flowers, and there we have our background. So I'm going to rinse my brush. I use two cups. I use a, one cup with a little bit of soapy water. I use this paint puck. And then I use another cup that has fresh water. And I give a little rinse. Then I like to give my brush a little bit of a squeeze between paper towels or a rag or whatever it is that I'm working on. Um, this way when I stand my brush up, 
it doesn't run, the water doesn't run out and into my painting. Okay, now I'm gonna put out some dark brown. We use a bunch of browns for this painting, or a sienna, um, some fawn. I'll get them all out now. So we want light browns, dark browns. I use a little bit of yellow ochre in here. Some raw sienna, some burnt sienna. We want our hairs to have all different colors. And then at the end, we'll add a little bit of white just to brighten everything up. Okay, then I'm going to switch brushes to my smaller one now. I'm going to go to this medium brown, this medium flat one. It's about a half inch wide. And I'm going to start doing the cow's background. And again, these, these strokes don't matter as much where we're doing these V's for the hairline. These are just guiding points because when we come back later, and we're gonna pull in all this wispy hair for our beautiful Highlander. That's what matters. This undercoat here now with the brown doesn't matter that much. And you just want a jagged edge there, but it doesn't matter how neat or exact the jagged points are. It's gonna matter when we paint in the rest of our cow. So I'm just filling in all of this down here with the dark brown. Get a little bit more. Brown tends to be one of those colors that's a little bit translucent, like yellow and orange and red. So you might need two colors. I mean two colors, you might need two coats, but it's not really that important. As long as your brush strokes are nice and even, so I'm going back in here and pulling everything down. As long as your brush strokes are nice and even, we're gonna go over this guy with so much detail that if your first coat of brown is not perfect, it's totally okay because you're not even gonna see most of it. If you wanna do a second coat of brown, totally up to you, go right ahead. And again, I'm just doing the edges where I had the brown. Okay. Then I'm going to just dip in a little bit of this raw sienna and I'm going to do up in here on his face. Go around the snout and again around the little jagged hair. I didn't even wash my brush because it's going to be so many varieties and browns and rust colors in here it doesn't even matter okay and now i'm going to go to the lighter color i'm going to again not even washing my brush and i'm going to fill in the whole thing so when i start to do the base layer of what's going to be the highlanders crazy hair is what makes the Highlander unique. I'm doing one stroke at a time. Taking my brush, I'm holding it on the flat and I'm filling in and then I'm coming in with the next stroke. And this is when I said to you, we're gonna be going over our black. So it didn't matter how straight or how perfect you painted in the black to begin with. Okay. 
and I'm just gonna paint all this in. I'm holding my brush a little bit on the flat and I'm coming down into the points. Go around the flowers and we're gonna do our flowers last and the flowers are gonna be over the hair so you don't really have to worry much about the lines right now where your hair and the top of the Highlander meets the flowers because the flowers are going to be one of the last things we paint and that will clean up any of these rough edges you have. Okay, and again, these strokes went this way, and now these strokes are going this way, one at a time. Flat, pull down, come over the black a little bit, and just fill in the rest of that, okay? I'm gonna get my other little brown and come in here and do around, oh, missed part, missed around the eye. And then I forgot this whole big part. So back to my beige. I'm just coming in here with the tan. Next one. Next one. Next one. And fill it all in. Okay, we're just basically at this point, what we call color blocking and filling in all the areas with our base color, okay? I'm just trying to clean up if we see any white still. And there we go. Now I'm just gonna wipe off my brush. I'm gonna put out a little bit of white. And I'm going to pick up all the white and come in here and do the antlers. And we want the antlers whiter than the cow. They're basically like a little bit of a creamy color. They're not totally white. They're a little off-white. But they are mostly white. Lighter than any of the others. So if you need to mix more white in or clean your brush or maybe add a second coat, that's fine. But we want our antlers to be more on the white side. Hmm. There we go. Hmm. I'm gonna go back to the color we used around the eye and I'm gonna paint in the snout. Now if you just have like one or two browns you just have a dark brown and a light brown. You could do a lot of color changes and make a lot of different values by using black and white. Okay, so don't ever let not having the supplies or the exact right colors matter to you because you can always, always make some dark values with a little tiny bit of black or lighten up your values with a little bit of white, okay? So. Okay, and I'm gonna wash my brush. So we've pretty much used our dark brown for the body. We then went in and base coated most of the hair with the tan, and then we used a medium value in for the eye around the eye and the main part of the snout and we used our tans for the nose and the mouth and then I washed my brush again and now I'm going to switch to my small round brush you can switch to a small round brush or a liner brush whatever you have okay so the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to go back to my tan and when you use a small round or a liner brush you want to roll it into your paint so you can get a point and you want to not use like really, really 
heavy pressure. So I'm just coming in here. And this is why I said it didn't really matter how your brown came out or not. So I'm going into paint every single time and I'm pulling in these pieces of fur or hair or what the Highlander tends to be a little bit more shaggy than a regular dairy cow. Not that I'm a farm expert, but that is the point, making it a little bit shaggy. You want these lines to be curvy, not straight. You want some of them can overlap some of them are longer, some of them are shorter, and these for the body are just going directly down. They have a curve to them, but they're facing downward. They all don't have to stop at the start at the top. Some can start in the middle, down a little bit further, different thicknesses and thinnesses, and we're just pulling this all in here different lines and we're going to add more color in here too we're going to come back in and add some white so you can make it as full or as sparse as you want have them a little bit going different ways mix it up a little bit okay i'm going to go up here to our dark brown again not washing our brush and we're going to start adding in the same way And we want to follow the direction of our original hairs. So some of them swoop to the left. And then some of them to the other side swoop to the right. And every time I'm picking up a little bit more paint and I'm coming back in here. And we're pulling in the dark brown. And this is why I said you didn't have to worry about your black so much because all these lines are pretty much going to cover over the black. And we're just layering and layering. I'm going to scoop around to face, like outline the eye. Just layering and layering. And you're not going to really know, and I always encourage no judging until you're done, because especially with this painting, paintings go through stages, and this one in particular, you really can't judge it until it's done. Because there's so many details and there's so many layers going on here that you really can't have an opinion or be like, oh my, my painting, my painting. Nope, not until it's done and it all comes together will you see. Um, how it's really supposed to look. So now I'm just going into the medium brown. This is more of a burnt sienna. And I'm adding some more in. Again, you want them to follow the shape and the curve. So these swoop down to one side of the eye. This one goes to the other side of the eye. Some are thicker. Some are thinner, and it's all about pressure. So if you want it thicker, you're gonna put a little bit more pressure on your brush. If you want it thinner, you're gonna put a little less pressure on your brush. And some go in between, and some go right over. We could add a couple in here, but we don't wanna to add too much. We wanna have more variety up in the face area. And I'm still not even washing my brush. Now I'm gonna go into um, this yellow ochre or this honey color that we have here. And I'm gonna add a few of these. And it doesn't matter, like even the color that we start out with, it starts to blend. You start picking up all the other colors on your brush and the color you started out with isn't even the same anymore. And that's okay. You want all this variety in here. Okay. I'm gonna 
I am going to wash my brush now a little bit and give it a rinse. Okay, once we have most of the line work in and most of the hair in, we want to let our browns set and our browns dry. So we're going to go into our flowers. We have more work to do with the cow, but while this part is drying, we're going to move on and we're going to come up here to the rest of the cow. Okay. I'm going to put out a little bit of purple. and a little bit of fuchsia and you can do your colors your colors you can do your flowers whatever color you want you want blue flowers you want yellow flowers it is totally up to you you can do them whatever color you want i'm going to dip a little bit in my fuchsia a little bit in my white and i'm going to come in here and i'm going to start painting in the base coat of the pink flowers a okay. little bit of fuchsia a little bit of white it's just blobbing I'm just putting layer after layer in here I don't want to over mix my white and my fuchsia we want to see the different values I'm not even going to wash my brush now I'm going to go to purple and white I'm going to do the same thing in here now with the purple flowers Hmm. purple and white and the purple flower I'm picking up a little bit of the browns but that's okay because we have a lot more to add purple and white to our cow anyway and now we have the base coat in of our five flowers and I'm gonna rinse my brush again if you need to pause or catch up or anything that's the beauty of having the video and you can hit the pause um, get caught up rewind look at it again whatever you want green and I'm going to base coat in our leaves this is a nice bright green but you can use any green that you have again I'm using the medium brush but you can use the little round brush if you want and I'm just filling in these areas with our leaf shapes. If there's part of your canvas that you don't love, you know what? You messed up your um, antler, or your horn, whatever it is, just go in and add another leaf. One another leaf down here on this side, it's totally fine. It's your artwork. If you need to add another leaf, or you'd like to have another leaf, or you want another leaf on this side, go right ahead. And I'm just base coating them in. I use my light green, and I just pretty much base coated in my leaf. So now we have everything kinda blocked out and ready to go. And I'm going to wash my brush again. And now I'm going to go back to my liner brush. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to go back to my, my the small brush that I had to begin with. I want to get a little bit of fresh white and brighten up just the tops of my antlers. Okay. Leave the bottoms have a little bit of shade because that's what's underneath and I'm just pulling in a little bit of fresh white up here on the tops 
Okay. And now I am going to go back to my liner brush. I'm going to go into my black. I'm going to twirl my liner brush. So I have a nice point to work with. And I'm going to paint in the nostrils. You should be able to see the lines. I didn't worry about being so, so perfect when I painted around them to begin with because it didn't really matter because now when you go back with the black, you can fix it. Then I'm going to take my black and I'm going to go and outline the snout. I'm going to take my black and I'm going to just outline in the mouth here. I'm going to have a nice dark line here and here. Nice clean dark line. See how now the difference is? I'm going to put a little black line here and here. And all these details now, this is what really starts to make your cow come to life. Now I'm doing the bottomest points of our cow where we had all these different sections of hair going. I'm just coming down and this is where we figure out and clean up all these points by coming in here with the black Mm -hmm. all those bottom lines use a little bit of black here to go around the section for the eye as well see how it's really now starting I'm going to put a swoop here and then we want a little swoop here And then I'm going to wash my brush again. And give it a nice rinse and dry. Okay. So now we want the black part to dry. I like to save the eye to last because it makes it like all of a sudden pop. So now we want our black lines to dry and we're going to go back to our flowers. So I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is work on my pink flowers. So I'm going to go into my fresh pink. When we did the base coat, we mixed it with white. I'm going to go into my fresh pink, and I'm going to add in these little comma strokes. They go around the whole flower, and they work their way to the inside. Same thing over here. So I'm doing a little comma stroke, smiley face. You want them to be curved. They get smaller and they work their way into the center of the flower. Okay? And then I'm gonna wash my brush. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the purple. So I'm gonna go right into my purple paint. Now this is just a half a flower. This one, the pink is covering it. So visualize our center being up here and our flower being round and our center being up in here. So instead of going in a complete circle, we're just maybe working on half of the flower and we're only gonna do the bottom half. If your flower was a little bit more round, use your judgment and see if you have to add more um, comma strokes or apostrophe strokes going in a different direction. So I'm just layering these in here. Some start to the left, some start to the right. 
and they work their way towards the center. You want to leave plenty of base coat or base color and just add in these comma strokes as you work your way around. Okay, and then I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to go back to my um, small flat brush. We're just going to add a little bit of texture to our background and I'm just putting some purple on my brush and pulling in these abstract. It's almost like the flower petals are blowing in the wind. Then I'm going to go to my fuchsia. Didn't even wash my brush. And just add in a little bit of interest. You can put as many of these or as few of these as you want in the background. And pick up a little bit of white to my fuchsia so I can have a little bit more white in there or light pink actually. Okay and then I'm gonna wash my brush again. I'm going to go back to my liner. If you need fresh white, now would be a good time to get it. I'm going to go into the side of my white that's clean. I can get fresh white if I want. I'm rolling my liner brush between my thumb and my finger. And I'm going to outline my leaves. I'm just going around every leaf, making a nice point. We always want one leaf to be in the front and one leaf to be in the back, so we're not like totally outlining all of them. Okay. Then I'm going to get my white paint and we're going to add our little veins, the little details to our leaf. So you want to pull the stem right up the middle and then add the little veins up on the diagonal. So we're going to pull the stem up the middle, add our veins, again, stem right up the middle. Even though you can't see the whole leaf, you can visualize where the middle is. And there we have our leaves. And then sticking with our white, we're going to go back to our flowers and we're going to do the same thing we did with our fuchsia and our purple, but now we're going to do it with white. And we want to add some nice, fresh white comma strokes, smiley faces, frowns, whatever you want to call them, to our flowers. Sometimes if your second color, in this case the dark purple, is not completely dry, that's okay. You're just going to end up with a little bit more variety and that is totally fine. If you end up putting too much white, you can go back and add more purple. If you want more white, go back and add more white. And I'm just adding in another layer, working my way to the inside, just like we did. I'm gonna wash my brush. Now I'm going to go back to my green and we're going to put in these little sprigs, okay? Little flicks. So I'm just flicking in the paint. I'm taking the point of my brush. If you need to practice on some Scrap paper first so your, thin, uh, so your lines are nice and thin. Go right ahead. 
I'm just coming in here and I'm flicking in. And as I flick out, I raise my brush so it's thinner on the ends. And I'm just adding in those little sprouts. And you can put as many or as few as you want. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing down here. These are going to be a little bit thicker. So now we got him chewing his cud. I'm going to put a little bit of pressure, make it a little bit thicker, and then pull out. A little bit of pressure and pull out. We want these to be a little bit thicker. Some are hanging down, some are pulling out. Okay, and here he is chewing his cud. And the big difference with this is you're gonna put a little bit more pressure on your brush because you want these grasses to be a little bit thicker than you want those up there. little bit more pressure and then pulling out and we have all that grass and then I'm just going to even add some short ones out here that don't come directly from his mouth but that come off of what he's already eating And then I'm going to wash my brush again. I'm going to give a rinse. Okay. I'm going to put out a little bit of fresh white because I want my white for my Highlander's hair to be really nice and white. And I don't want to have any pink or purple in it whatsoever. So I'm going to give my brush a little bit of a twirl. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start adding in some white highlights. Not too many. Look how they just start to pop. Not too many. Just a few. Just in the major places. bit under here and you can do as many or as little as you want I don't like to do too many and just maybe a couple out here okay then we're just going to add a little bit of highlight to his nose I want to add a nice white line, nice fresh white line to the top of both of the horns. I want to lighten up just a few of these, not too many, not all of them. Just add a little bit of white to some of them so they pop. I'm going to add a little bit of white in here to his grass. Okay, just some highlights in there. I'm going to wash my brush again. And now we're going to do the eye. So I'm going back to my black. And the eye is flat on one side. And it's not totally rounded or pointed. It's almost like a, the bottom of an acorn. And it comes out like that. And then we're going to fill it in.
it's almost like um, a rounded edged triangle but like a little bit more on its side and we have that filled in nice in there with the black and the works my brush I want this part here to be just a little bit more white to come up there okay um, you can do your black whatever color you want I should have done it before I rinsed but I'm gonna take this black and I'm just going to add dots. Now remember this one's a half a flower. So our center is up here. It's not in the center of what we see. It's in the center of the flower because there's a part of the flower that we don't see. And I'm just adding in, I'm using my liner brush, you can use the small round brush, little tiny dots for the center of my flower. Okay. Then I'm going to outline the flower, but not the whole way. I'm just adding some more of those smileys on the perimeter of the flower, but I'm not like outlining the whole flower. It's just more of defining the shape of it. go. And wash my brush again. And then last but not least, we're going to take the back of our brush, the brush handle, and dip it in our white paint. We're going to give our cow a little bit of a dot there. And then I'm going to pick up some nice fresh white. And we're going to put a line for the glare. And there she is. That's why I do the eye last because it's just like, ah, brings the whole thing to life. So what do you guys think? We turn you around. And here is our spring Highland cow chewing his cud. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you again at Teresa's Spot for Art. Have a great, great night, day, evening, whatever it is that you're doing. Have fun, everyone. Bye-bye.